In previous session, we studied some points from the topic chemical thermodynamics. Okay. In that we studied introduction, the terms frequently used in thermodynamics, after that nature of work and heat, then PV type of work, then maximum work, work done in chemical reaction, after that we studied the internal energy, then we studied one more point, first law of thermodynamics. Okay, the formulation of first law of thermodynamics is delta U is equal to Q plus W. And derive the first law of thermodynamics for different processes in that isothermal process, adiabatic process, isobaric process and then isochoric process. We studied this part also. Okay, now let us see the next point, point number 8 is the enthalpy. Enthalpy is denoted by symbol H. What is meant by enthalpy? You know the system with its internal energy and PV type of work is there. Now enthalpy is the sum of internal energy of the system and the energy equivalent to PV type of work. Okay, that is enthalpy is a sum of internal energy of the system and the energy equivalent to PV work, the enthalpy. Now see here, internal energy, pressure, volume, these are state functions. Therefore, enthalpy is also state function. Then, enthalpy depends on amount of the substance. Therefore, it is an extensive property. It is an extensive property. Next, now consider here isochoric process. Isochoric process in that QV is equal to delta U. That is, we studied this part, the heat changes, that is QV at a constant volume. That is here, volume is constant. Heat changes at a constant volume is equal to delta U. Okay, because here volume is constant, no work done. But suppose in laboratory what happens? Most of the reactions are carried out in open test tube or in the open beaker. That is pressure is constant. Is the atmospheric pressure. Now here heat changes so at a constant pressure. Here internal energy is in, involved as well as here work done by the system or work done on the system. That is both terms are involved. That is heat changes at a constant pressure is considered with the help of this term enthalpy. Okay, now consider in detail that enthalpy. Enthalpy, now consider one process. A is converted into B. This is the initial state. Suppose its enthalpy is H1. It is the final state. Suppose its enthalpy is H2. Now, what is enthalpy? U plus PV. Therefore, H1 is equal to U1 plus P1 V1. And H2 is equal to U2 plus P2V2. Okay? Next. Now what is change in enthalpy? Change in enthalpy that is delta H. Delta H means final minus initial that is H2 minus H1. Okay. What is H2? This one. Substitute the value of H2 and H1 this equation that is u2 plus p2 v2 minus u1 plus p1 v1 okay and here u2 minus u1 u2 minus u1 plus here p2 v2 minus p1 v1 okay 
Now this is a delta u is equal to delta u plus now this is a P2V2 minus P1V1 that is delta PV. Alright. Now next. Suppose here the pressure that is P2 and P1 constant. Pressure is constant. Here pressure constant. Then what happens? P2 is equal to P1. Say it is a P. Now substitute this value in this. Here it is your delta U plus now P constant V2 minus V1. Okay. Because we are considering heat changes at a constant pressure. Therefore here pressure is constant. Now delta U plus P delta V. Delta H is equal to consider this equation as the equation number 1. Okay. Now, see here, you studied isobaric process. Okay, isobaric process that is heat changes at a constant pressure. Now, QP is equal to QP is equal to S delta U plus P external delta V. Now suppose pressure inside and outside is same. That is P external is equal to P. Therefore, this equation becomes QP is equal to delta U plus P delta V. Suppose this is equation number 2. Now compare equation number 1 and 2. See here delta U plus P delta V. Delta U plus P delta V. This side is same. Therefore, delta H is equal to QP. Okay. So here, what is obtained? Delta H is equal to QP. Now, and here, what is the equation? At a constant volume, QV is equal to Delta U. That is delta U is equal to QV. It is at a constant pressure and it is at a constant volume. Now see here. Actually this delta H that is changing enthalpy. Okay. That is heat changes at a constant pressure. Okay. This one. That is H2 minus H1 during this process. That is actually delta H means the change in enthalpy means heat is evolved or how much heat is evolved or how much heat is absorbed. That is the change in enthalpy that is the heat at a constant pressure. Changing heat at a constant pressure. Because we are considering heat evolved or absorbed during the process. Okay. And here the change in heat at a constant volume is equal to change in internal energy. Now see here one important point. This is a state function. It is a state function. Therefore QP is also state function. In previous session I have told you that this is a state function. How? Because delta H is state function. Therefore, it is a state function. Here also same. It is a state function. Therefore, it is also state function. That is in short. Q is a path function. Q is a path function. But. QV and QP are state function. Are state function. Remember this. Okay. Why? The reason is here. Understand the concept? Now, here heat changes at a constant pressure is a delta H. Heat changes at a constant volume is a delta U. Now, let us see 
what is the relationship between this delta H and delta U? Okay, let us see that part now. Let us see the relationship between delta H and delta U for chemical reaction. Okay, you know that how delta H and delta U are related with one another by this equation. Okay, for reaction involving solids and liquids, okay, what happened? The change in volume that is delta V is very small. Therefore, it can be neglected. Therefore, for reaction involving solids and liquids. Okay. Volume change is very small. Therefore, it is neglected. Therefore, delta H is equal to delta U. But suppose the reaction involving gaseous components. Then, the, consider the relation between delta H and delta U. Delta H is equal to delta U plus this P V2 minus V1. Change in volume. Okay. That is delta U P V2 minus P V1. Let us see one process. A is converted into B. This is the initial state. Suppose V1 is the volume of gaseous reactant, okay, with the number of moles M1. And with the final state, here V2 is the volume of gaseous phase products, okay, with number of moles N2. And suppose these gases are behaves like ideal gases. Then according to ideal gas equation, PV is equal to NRT. Okay. Now here PV1 is equal to N1RT for this. Okay. And for this PV2 is equal to N2RT. Now substitute the value of PV1 and PV2 in this equation. Therefore delta H is equal to delta U plus N2RT minus N1RT. Now delta U plus this N2 minus N1RT here. What is N2 minus N1? N2 minus N1 is a delta N but only for gaseous reactant and chloride. Therefore delta NGRT. This is the relationship between delta H and delta U for gaseous phase chemical reaction. Okay, that is for a chemical reaction. Now, what is delta NG? Delta NG is equal to number of moles of gaseous product minus number of moles of gaseous reactant. Consider only gaseous. Next, now suppose when this delta, what is the relationship between this delta H and delta U? When delta H is greater, when delta H is smaller, let us see that part. So here, first suppose if N2 greater than N1, N2 greater than N1, then delta NG is positive. If it is a positive, then delta H is greater. Delta H is greater than delta U. Consider one example. Suppose water liquid converted into water vapors that is gaseous state. Here the number of moles 1. Here no gaseous state therefore 0. Therefore N2 greater delta H greater. N2 greater delta H greater. Next consider if N1 greater than N2, then delta NG is negative. If N1 is greater than N2, delta NG is negative. Therefore, delta H, if it is a negative, delta H is smaller. 
consider one example n2 gas plus 3h2 gas gives ammonia formation of ammonia gas see here the number of n2 2 and here 3 plus 1 that is 4 now here n1 is greater n1 greater delta h is smaller okay if it is a greater then it is minus okay and if suppose n1 is equal to n2 means during that process, the number of moles of gaseous reactant is equal to number of moles of gaseous product. Then, delta Ng is equal to 0. This equal to this. Okay. Then, delta H is equal to delta U. Because if it is a 0, then this value is 0. Delta H is equal to delta U. Consider one example. N2 gas plus O2 gas gives 2 NO gas, nitric oxide gas. Here number of moles are 2, here also 2. Delta N 0, delta H is equal to delta U. Okay, now this is about the derivation or relation between this. Question may be asked like this, derive the relationship between delta H and delta U for chemical reaction. Or this formula given, and derive this formula. Okay. Now here you know that delta H is equal to QP. And delta U is equal to QV. Then you can write this equation as a QP is equal to QV plus delta NERT. Okay. You may write like this. Both are same. Now let us see. The when or under which condition delta H is equal to delta U. What are the different conditions? Question may be asked on that part. Let us see the answer of that question. Next point is conditions under which delta H is equal to delta U. A question may be asked on this part. Under what conditions delta H is equal to delta U. Let us see that points. First one is, actually you derive two formulae that gives the relationship between delta H and delta U. See this one formula and this is the another formula. Okay. Now suppose if that reaction is carried out in a closed vessel. Okay. Means what? The volume remains constant. That is delta V is equal to 0. Then this part is 0. Therefore delta H is equal to delta U. Therefore, remember first point, it is carried out in a closed vessel. Next, now suppose in that reactions, only solids and liquids are in there. No gaseous reactant and product. Then, volumes of solids and liquids are, that is changing their volume, is very small. Therefore, neglect that part. Therefore, delta H is equal to delta U. The second that is, if reactions involving only liquids and solids. Okay. Next, third point. Now, suppose in that reaction, gaseous reactants are there, gaseous products are also there, but they are in an equal number of moles. N1 is equal to N2. Then, delta Ng is equal to 0. That is, this part is 0. Then, delta H is equal to delta U. These are the conditions. Now in today's session we studied the part enthalpy, change in enthalpy, how it is related with the delta U at a constant pressure. Then what is the relationship between delta H and delta U for chemical reactions. Okay. And next is conditions. Now in next session we will see the numericals based on this part.